Good morning and welcome. Here we are in St. James building this morning for our service. So I am thrilled to be here. It's a one time only. We're kind of breaking the rules, but not really. We're maintaining our distance, but we want to test out our new equipment. So if you have a BAS, uh, you will need it. And we're going to begin on page 45. If you don't have one, uh, I did send out uh, an order of service through your email, so it will be in there. So again, welcome. As you can see, I'm not in front of my computer today, so I won't be able to respond to you right away, but I will later, I promise. And hopefully everything is up and running just fine. So let's take a moment of silence and we will begin. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them return to the Lord and he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will be rich, he will richly pardon. Dear friends in Christ, as we prepare to worship Almighty God, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. We turn over the page to page 49. Uh, nope, sorry. 50, to Christ our Passover. And we'll read it together. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died... He died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. And we will now continue with the reading. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. 
In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promises of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he, when he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. The word of the Lord. We'll read Psalm 47, and we'll read it together. Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with a cry of joy. For the Lord Most High is to be feared. He is the great King over all the earth. He subdues the peoples under us and the nations under our feet. He chooses our inheritance for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. God has come up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a ram's horn. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our God, sing praises. For God is king of all the earth, sing praises with all your skill. God reigns over the nations, God sits upon his holy throne. The nobles of the peoples have gathered together with the people of the God of Abraham. The rulers of the earth belong to God, and he is highly exalted. And together we read, Blessed are you, God of all the earth. You have called us out of every people and nation to be a royal priesthood and citizens of your holy city. May our words of praise call the world to turn to the joy of fellowship with you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and you love toward and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called great you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? 
and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. Far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you, and also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the Law of Moses, the Prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the Scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high, then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing God. The Gospel of Christ. Having spent 40 days with the disciples following his death, Jesus bodily ascends up into the air and up into heaven. Any possible doubt that Jesus actually died would disappear in this moment. People just don't suddenly float up into the sky and disappear. Not then and not now. This event was life-changing for the disciples. They do not return to life as it was before Jesus. They now return to Jerusalem, and according to John, were continually in the temple, blessing God. Luke places them in the upper room, constantly praying to God. Either way, these people, women included, do not go back to doing things the way they did before Jesus. Their lives have been turned upside down. Our lives, too, have been turned upside down. For the last two months, we have been socially distancing due to this nasty COVID-19 virus. It has been a drastic change for all of us. Even those who are essential workers have had big changes in the way we work. What has been your response? Have you followed the rules and stayed home? only venturing out if absolutely necessary? Or have you bent the rules? Or maybe you've decided the rules are not necessary and you go on as life as usual. How does being a Christian affect our decisions during this difficult time? Some Christian pastors have told their people that God will not allow the virus to affect them or that it is a duty to continue having church. The results have been horrific. Congregations ignoring the safety guidelines have been almost wiped out by COVID. God has never told us that belief in God will protect us from disease. It is an abuse of power, in my view, to teach otherwise. 
The news now declares that Trump has ordered churches to resume services in their buildings today. A true conflict between church and state. Now, we've been very blessed here in St. Mary's to not have any active cases at this time. Of course, one family in St. Mary's has lost a family member, <clears throat> and that is heartbreaking. But the virus is still out there, like a horror film monster just waiting to strike. It has not been eradicated. We have not built up immunity. It can strike at any moment. So as Christians, what are we called to do? Well, as Christians, our primary task after loving God is loving our neighbor as ourselves. Therefore, we need to take the loving approach. This means we turn our life upside down and stay at home to protect ourselves and others. It is a challenge and inconvenient. During the time following Jesus' resurrection, the disciples stopped what they were doing and spent time with Jesus. It might have been inconvenient and challenging. However, they took that time to learn as much as they could about God, Jesus, and faith. The new priority was spending time with Jesus while they could. Like the disciples during their time with the risen Christ, we too are learning new ways during this time of COVID. We're learning new ways of doing things. We're learning new ways of reaching out to others. We are learning new ways to do technology. We are realizing how important hugs are, and we miss them. We're missing family and friends and the freedom to go visit. Some of us are appreciating nature more than before as we get outside as a break from the isolation in our homes. We're finding new ways to shop. We may also be spending more time learning about God, Jesus, and faith. This can be a perfect time to open up our Bibles take an online Bible study course to discuss scripture with others. Maybe a few gather over Zoom and talk about the Sunday readings or the sermon. Maybe two or more connect over the phone to pray for each other. Maybe a family spends time around the table talking about where they saw God this week. There are many ways we can reach out to enrich our faith, even in this difficult time, while still protecting our family, friends, and neighbors. I encourage you to come up with ways that suit you. Those who are more adventurous can help those who are not. Don't be afraid to reach out or try something new. As their time with the risen Christ ended, the disciples were blessed to see Jesus ascend to heaven. As they stood gazing up into the heavens, two angels appeared and asked, why, asked them why they were just standing around looking up to heaven. They were to stop looking for answers and to get on with what they were tasked with. They were to look expectantly for Christ's return, but to get on with life. And we look expectantly for change to come. Not only do we await Christ's return, but we are also are focused right now on getting back to getting on with life. Slowly, some things are being allowed, but in general, we are still in quarantine. We still await the big change though when we can get back to normal. But like the disciples, our new normal will look very different from our old normal. I think each of us has tried to picture what life will be like post-COVID. Some things I can predict. Church will again be diff different, 
even though we will be here in this same church building. We will not be singing hymns, as that spreads the disease too easily. I will be the only one up at the altar so that we can maintain safe distances. We will be spaced out, well, that sounded wrong, but we will be spaced well out <laughs> in the sanctuary so that we, again, don't spread the COVID virus and just keep safe distancing. Communion will be bread only. Passing of the peace will not happen. But we will be in each other's company again. We will be able to partake in Holy Communion. We will see each other rather than just you seeing me. God is with us, whether whichever way we worship and wherever we worship. And while it's easy to look up and wonder where God is in all of this and where he's gone, know that God is here today in each of your homes and here in St. James Church building. So together, take a big sigh of relief and know that God is here and he has blessed us abundantly. We continue on page 52 with the affirmation of faith. Together we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now Sherry is going to lead us in prayers. The prayers this morning come from litany number two on page 112. Litany number two on page 112. Let us pray with confidence to the Lord, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. O Lord, guard and direct your church in the way of unity, service, and praise. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Give to all nations an awareness of the unity of the human family. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Cleanse our hearts of prejudice prejudice and selfishness and inspire us to hunger and thirst for what is right. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Teach us to use your creation for your greater praise that all may share the good things you provide. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Strengthen all who give their energy or skill for the healing of those who are sick in body or in mind. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. Set free all who are bound by fear and despair. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Grant a peaceful end and eternal rest to all who are dying and your comfort to those who mourn. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, ascended to the throne of heaven that he might rule over all things as Lord. Keep the church in the unity of the Spirit and in the bond of his peace. 
and bring the whole of creation to worship at his feet, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ just taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit remain with you and those that you love and those you should love now and always. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.